Hello everybody and welcome to another David Samoleta. I have Greg with me here. Nice to meet you, Greg. Hello. He's one of my viewers from the YouTube channel and if you guys are in town, you know, contact me, email or something like that, get together. He's got something very interesting to show you guys. He's actually doing van life and he built everything himself. Everything is custom and it's actually really cool. This is probably like the coolest setup I've ever seen. So I hope you guys will join us for that. It may be a long video, but you're gonna learn a lot and Greg's gonna explain some of the things that he's done. The concept of my van is to have everything removable without tools so that you know you can set up your, your van for the adventure or the weekend that you're planning. So right now it's set up with bunk beds uh, which can be transformed into one middle bed which we can show you in a time lapse and there's actually a large drawer that can uh, house a bike which can slide underneath the middle bed. Well, everything can uh, come out. This is a hot water heater that actually just slips off and you'll see in other pictures that I have it on a 40 gallon water tank. Right now I'm set up with a 20 gallon water tank which is underneath the, underneath the refrigerator uh, freezer. Um, so uh, this blue thing is a refrigerator. It's an freezer? ARB uh, refrigerator. It's 12 volt. It, uh, it's one of the most uh, efficient refrigerators that is made. Uh, so how much does a refrigerator like this cost? Um, they're quite pricey. I believe this one's 50 liters and it's probably around 600 or 700 dollars. And this water heater about 200? This is uh, actually a South American version. They make an American one. But what I found was uh, the heat that came off of it uh, when it was in working was there's so much heat being wasted. And when I did some more research, I found a South American version. The heat exchanger is about twice the size and it uh, has barely any heat coming off. It works on propane. So the actual uh, heat that comes off it is more of a wet heat, which is not the greatest for, for um, living in a in a van or a boat. All this stuff is kind of boat stuff. Mm -hmm. So for my heat what I use is an Erberspacher um, D2 diesel heater which is housed in the back uh, underneath the bed and it, it uh, gives off um, a ton of heat. I've been in Montana and um, Wyoming in the dead of winter in negative 20 and you can get it at 100 degrees in here. Um, everything is insulated with spray and insulation, which you can see my, I have solar panels on the roof. This is my solar charger. And you can see the insulation that's sprayed in around the side. This um, is a really nice solar charger. All, all, all my panels are done with magnets, as you can see. So they're extra, so I'm not any space. There's, you know, space is at if so you want to save it all. So this just, it's right up there. It's nice and clean and, uh, and doesn't waste any space again. I have a shower right here which doubles as a as part of the bed so my 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 bed flips over so you have an extra long side you have and a lot of beds I have right now I am set up a with bunk bed so you can take uh, two or three adults. or two adults and two kids and uh you know it just has the the most sleeping space I could fit in here and you know there's plenty of room to to sit down to lie it's not too it's not uh, too crowded uh it's actually pretty snuggy um everything that zips off. My friend from uh, MCB, Jamie McKinnon up in Ossipee, New Hampshire, helped me, helped me uh, do some of the textile stuff and, and uh, helped me with these, with these uh, cushions and zippers and everything. does top-notch work. So he also helped me build the shower curtain, curtain which you'll see in a second. Um, this shower is amazing. So what we have here is a little mirror so you can really? see what you... And then I have a sink in here which I made I don't always use this that much, but you'd put a hose in and it would drain so you don't get the curtain wet. It's all graded to let the water flow nice. to one corner. Um, when I take a shower, I usually take that out. I'll put this in and then this all just lifts right up and you dip it up and you just, okay, so you got those, uh, some specials that are fabricated and they click right in. And then this little part just, right in like that nice. and then I have some magnets in the shower curtain 
they kind of hold it up and this is all made to hold this shape square and in the bottom here i can pull inside this is the shower base all uh fiberglass and it's so this is all fiberglass this is all fiberglass nice. inside of wood um the drain falls out in the edge of the step area so there's no wasted height so I get full height and I didn't have to build a box to drain from. I, I haven't seen very many people doing that. This is actually real nice. I've never seen anybody um, have a shower. If, like right inside of the van, everybody is basically outside mm -hmm. usually. But in summertime, in the winter time, you're not going to really pull it off. Or if you're in a city space or somewhere where it's, you know, populated, you don't yes. want to pull out and just start taking a shower oh, yeah. on the side of New York City. You know, the cops <laughs> are going to be on you like yellow yeah, jackets that's and honey. Right, that's right. <laughs> um, I made this. I, I found the... Um, the, the typical uh, plastic shower head that you get uh, doesn't do so well in the winter. The, the, the handle will actually freeze up and crack uh, where the valve is. So I made fabricated this one out of just some uh, uh, copper piping and it has a much, you know, I've never had a problem with this one freezing. Uh, Good for, job. So you fabricated this yeah, thing. Yeah, just a wow, pretty amazing. simple. I can show you it in action and turn on the water sure. pump and then just wow. let it go. That is. Nice. Nice works great. And it turns off. Uh, it turns it off once in. the pressure gets up. So this is so the switch here. Yeah, it's on right now. And, uh, wow. and then I can just turn it off so in case that opens, it's not going to empty the tank. Um, this is also, for winter living, there's a lot of things you got to know for when you're camping in the winter. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you have to do is. You have to purge your water system if you're gonna not leave your heater on all day, and because if 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 this freezes, you will break the uh, heat exchanger. And so the way I do that is I have a, a special quick release valve. Mm -hmm. A little water comes out. That's why I keep this right here. That's line. No, but none will. This is actually a valve that will stop anything else from falling out that way. And then I turn on the pump and I pump out the rest of the water through the whole system. So, so that, this is a pump? Yep, this is the pump, and then it will just pop out what's left in here and the line, and then we don't have any freezing problems. Did you buy the pump uh, separately? The pump is, is, is yeah, it's, this is this heater is uh, made for 3.2 gallons mm -hmm. of flow per minute. This pump is actually only one gallon per minute. So okay. I can get, you know, 20 gallons is 20 minutes of shower. Typically yeah. shower, so you... So this is 20 gallons of water inside, underneath Inside the here, and it's all blocked out so that you don't get light or algae growth. Really? That's why. I was going to ask about that, because most people, they probably hold the water outside. Yeah, well, you don't want to, you want to keep make sure it's um, light trade, right. or else you're going to get uh, algae, gr algae growth. Another thing that a lot of people don't think about when they're building their vans is um, condensation under a mattress and this is again wow. this is boat boat um, this is boat technology and what you do is, uh, you'll notice underneath all my beds yes. I have a special uh, a special uh, mat that keeps about an inch of air space underneath the mattress oh, which okay. keeps allows for uh, condensation to not soak into the mattress and then you don't end up with a soggy or moldy mattress which happens where, a lot where do you get that special this material? stuff is uh, again it's boat it's from you find it at um boat specialty stores you can find it online really um also what's i've heard it, what's the name of it I'm, I'm, it goes by different names. I'm not sure what this uh, brand was, but they also there's a similar material that is used in roofing to keep a layer between the roof. And I've thought about using that, but I'm not sure what the material which made it up at how safe it is to sleep on. So, how does this material feel? So it does. It feels uh, it can, plasticky. It, yeah, it's plastic. It can hold. A, it can hold something like a uh, hundred pounds per square inch on top without without compressing. Okay. Have you, uh, where did you buy it? Amazon? Um, I don't believe they sell that on Amazon. Okay. That was a special order. You just have to go online and look at, um, you know, boat distribution. This website. is actually a really warm day. This is not very really warm. This is not Minnesota weather. <laughs> I stay in Maine and Massachusetts, yeah. so that's why I'm sweating. <laughs> so I guess uh, in the summertime, you turn on this fan. I have and this I really fan. like how you turn it on. So you It's got, you got all automatic. Remote. I have a remote control. It's, this is a fantastic vent. Um, a lot of people use these. Look how cool it is, guys. It's, it's automatic, turns on. It also has a rain sensor, so I can leave the van, I can leave it on. If it starts to rain, it will automatically close, and you're not going to come back to a wet van. That is amazing. Do you have any pets that travel I with I do you? not have any pets that travel with me. 
basically you have all the space to yourself. I, I do. But like I said, it's a concept. I, I, I don't... Really nice right one. now, uh, usually I, I have a middle bed in here, which is... You can Even see another on, one. Uh, this whole bracket and metal set just goes up one level to about here, and which is high enough to house the bike on the drawer that you'll see in a minute. Sure. And we'll ha we have some time lapse of me taking all the switching the beds from from a double bed to a single bed right now i'm in the process of moving so i have everything in here the drawer both beds just because i'm keeping all my stuff together at this point instead of leaving something in the garage um this shelving system which looks real cluttered now because it's full i think we have some uh videos where it's empty but all this the only thing holding this together is the strings Mm -hmm. running through everything is um kind of combed to kick together uh, interlocking you can see on the sides yes so that, that's what, what, what that. that's what holds it all all to all together um so you could actually take it apart and everything will go down flat if you want so the whole shelf is being held on with these strings only yeah just the strings are holding that's it together amazing. and then the, the one and there's one bolt that, that ties it to this to the um to the leg frame which keeps it rigid awesome and then this whole like I said, this whole thing can lift right out. The whole um, water heater can lift right out. And you'll see in other pictures, I have a 40 gallon water tank in the middle and it just sits on, That's pretty on, convenient. The, on the water tank. Pull it out. Yeah, everything. Um, right here I have an uh, inverter, 2000 watt inverter. Um, and then inside this box is housed a, um, a, a charge controller for 120 uh, volts. And I have a plug on the, on the back uh, left side, which which uh, which feeds into this and then allows this to charge the house batteries, which I can show you here is, I have toggles here. Um, I guess uh, you have toggles, have toggles. visible from here, right here. And yep. so I toggles latch here and I have another one on right on the other side. Mm -hmm. And this is really interesting how you did that for the seat because uh, a lot of guys, they remove the seat completely because it is it gets in the way for one reason or another. But you have simply toggles that and allows you to take the headrest off, and I can yeah open it right up. Um, a latch that you designed. Yeah, these these are actually just mounted in some uh, hinges. Where did you get those hinges? Special um, hinges. They're just fabricated. Uh, fabricated yourself. Yeah, just at the, I didn't fabricate the actual hinge, but the, it's just a typical metal. You get it for just I got them at the uh, metal shop. So these are I see deep cycle batteries. Deep cycle. They're uh, like golf cart batteries, um, solar batteries. Um, they're two six volt batteries. Each one is. They're six volts, really. Each one, so they're hooked in series. So they're 232 amp hours at six volts hooked in series which is 12 volts at 232 amp hours this is really interesting that there's six volt batteries um what about using 12 volt, volt batteries well the two together make a 12 volt battery um so but what about two 12s you could put two 12s in there and and run them in series that's um, about 24 volts it, it's gonna well if you run them in if you run them in, i mean in if you ran them in parallel you run them in parallel and you get your you basically come up with the same with the same uh, amp hours of power. You know, I see uh, this uh, this connection, uh, you got positive to negative. Yep. This is called in series, right? Right, yep. So this actually makes 12 volts. Yes. But if you had positive to positive, negative to negative, we would, we would be in parallel. Volts. Yeah, it would remain six volts and we would, we would have twice the amp hour. So we'd have 464 amp hours at six volts. So I see you have many things right here hooked up. So many uh, things we have, this is, this line's coming from the alternator of the engine, mm -hmm. which I have a switch so I can tie this to the alternator. I can charge from the alternator if mm -hmm. there's no sun or I have snow on the panels. Mm -hmm. um, this line is going into the charge controller, so that's charging. And, and if I'm plugged in, it'll also run everything just off of uh, 120 volt, and then it will convert it to 12 volt and run everything in the van. Um, and then these lines go to my, I have a, on the back behind the refrigerator, there's a, a again, another boat. Um, fuse block for 12, I noticed 12 volt fuse block. 232 amp hours per each battery. That's per each, at six volts. So that's a uh, huge. It, it's it's uh these are our uh, uh, lead acid batteries. Mm -hmm. So the difference between this and lithium is only about half of that is usable amp hours. So it's only really about a hundred and twenty amp hours of usable, usable power before you're damaging your batteries. Really. But everything is set to shut off. So the refrigerator will shut off if the voltage becomes low on here and, and it'll start back up when it gets sunny again. 
Um, and uh, the, my the, question, the heater will shut off as well. If it, my if question would be, uh, and this might be uh, with the viewers as well, um, why did you go with two six volt batteries versus two 12 volts that you could run parallel? Uh, what was the deal with this? Is this a better setup? It's, it, it, they would be essentially they would be the same. I'm just using six volt batteries because typically these these batteries, golf cart batteries are typically run in six volts, and the motor on a golf cart might be 48 volts. They're just running them all in series, six volt batteries mm -hmm. to get the 48 volts. And how much are these six volt batteries? By um, I'm not exactly sure the price. They're not super cheap. They if you take care of them, they're supposed to last about 10 years. 10 I've years. Had, I've had mine for about five years, and they seem to still be as good as the day I got them. That's amazing. Um, are they like about a hundred dollars a piece? No, they they're probably them? probably about um, about one to two hundred dollars. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, one question would be: I see you have a what this negative going. Is this going to the body frame? This is going to the body frame to the chassis. It's grounding. Everything gets well, grounded to the chassis. To mount it? Is it there underneath? It the actually box? goes right in, and then I just grind it off uh, the paint. Is, is it, it? You cannot. Is that on this side? You cannot see uh, where, where it goes into the bottom on the bottom. So you grind it off the paint. Paint, and, it's and right then I, and then inside I, of the I attach right to the chassis. Right, right to the chassis. Is that from the inside that it's attached? Yeah, it's attached on the inside, so there's not oh. going to be any corrosion problems. I also use a lot of, uh, whenever I do a connections, I, I use a, a, a conductivity jelly just to keep corrosion mm -hmm. from forming. And, and, and I think you already mentioned this, but is there um, a one line coming in from the alternator to keep these things the, charged? Yeah, yeah the, the, this, this line, they all look the same. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, like this <laughs> line. This is the one that's coming from the alternator, and I'll show you. But because you have the ground, that's pretty much set. You could because you yep. grind everything out, ground yep. everything Everything's out. Ground. So then, right here, this switch here. So here's my my um. Here's my control panel. So right here. So right here, we're it's sunny out. So we're right now we're getting 13.4 volts. A charged 12 volt battery. Yeah, that's uh, fully charged. This is actually really flickering in it's, here, so it's 13.4. Uh, just to that's just the, the sun. So a full 12 volt battery is 12.7, um, up to 12.9 is, is a full battery. And as it goes down, uh, it's kind of parabolic curve as to how much how much power it has. But we're full right now. Um, so is this showing your car battery? This is not showing my car battery. Now, if this I this is your setup. This is the batteries underneath, underneath the the passenger seat. Um, this button here now connects it to the to the car battery in the alternator. Really? So so you see the voltage will jump when I push it. It's just connecting it to the to the front battery. This is the voltage equalizing. went from thirteen point five to thirteen point two. But now essentially because we're sunny, this would be charging the the car battery really? as well. Once which your solar panels will be charging, charging the car, car battery. battery. Um, it's probably not the best charge for it because now we're using uh, two different battery setups charging from the sun. It's because these are full right now, it's probably not going to make much of a difference. But if these were low and this was full, and I turned this on, it's going to start to take the power from from the vehicle battery and and pull them into the house battery. And, and one is a you know a high cold cranking amps, and, sure. and these batteries are they more don't, right? yeah they they are they don't have a ton of cranking amps. They're just more of a an even keel even. Um, battery to, to take I power think from. um this is also going to be a question that may arise uh with some viewers um would you consider um these batteries that's underneath the seat for them not to be deep cycle let's say like with a lot of cranking apps like what do you think about that um they're, they're those are not great batteries for use in in solar setups ideally these would be sealed batteries a lot of people are going to say that these batteries because they're, they're not sealed they're, they're not sealed and they're at water that they're giving off uh, hydrogen sulfide and all that, but we're pretty ventilated in here. It's under the front seat. Um, I've never had. A Is problem. there a way to to uh, just ventilate them, like with lines? Yeah, you could have them in an outs a box connected to the outside, or you could have a a, a sealed battery. And even now, we have uh, you know lithium ion lithium ion phosphates you know all kinds of new battery technology where you can actually discharge them all the way you could i could on my next set of batteries i'm probably going to get something with a little bit more usable amp hours and they'll probably be a lot smaller no i just did what i had to do when at the time when i did it i think a lot of people may be confused with this um amp hours like yours is like what like 235 amp hours Two, yeah. for, for each battery no no when you bring them together it's the same so it's 232 
at 12 volts because okay. we put the two sixes really? together. Really? Um, okay, uh, that makes sense. That mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense actually. So that, like, let's say you don't have solar panels, how long can you use them? Like, oh, uh, the batteries. It depends what you're doing. Um, my heater is only like 35 watts, so I can go for days with the heater. If it's really hot out, the refrigerator might it might take these down in three mm -hmm. days with with no sun. If it's really hot out, but usually when it's hot out, it's sunny. So I guess for days at a time, that's actually really good. Oh yeah, and I I I I mean, honestly, I never charge with the alternator hardly ever, and really? I, and I have the refrigerator on because of the solar panels. 24 hours a day. But let's say um, you don't have solar panels. How long would, would the alternator charge these batteries? Up? How long would it take? If you're driving. Let's um, say. I'm not completely sure. Usually I just drive it, and when this says 14.2 is kind of when it tops out. 14.2. That's I think that's what the alternator pushes. So it'll it'll stay it'll run it'll start at like 12.8 and it'll ramp up oh, yes. over time. But I think it would take um several hours, probably well, four oh, hours. Okay, it's not bad. Film. Not not bad. Oh, a lot but of it's four hours of driving. Oh yeah, expediters. Uh, a lot of expediters they watch this and uh, we do mainly driving instead of sitting. So for sitting somewhere a couple of days would be really nice if we could actually use yeah, the batteries. Yeah. Especially for a fan, like if you run yeah. a fan to keep yourself like, cool like in, while you're resting back there. Um, yeah, depending on the speed of the fan. Mine's variable speed, so I, the, the slower it goes, the less it draws. But some fans are actually draw the same power for every speed, which is How big is your alternator? How many amps? I believe I, I have about a 100 amp alternator. Really? Yeah, you usually 80, come with about 80. 90? Yeah, it might be 80. Um, so you got original one? Yeah, yeah. It's and not a find, special one. You find that that's enough? Oh, it's fine. Okay. So you don't really need to upgrade. Uh, no, uh, no. When I'm when I'm charging, it's not a huge power draw. It's just okay. a, you know, kind of a holds a little the, full charge. The solar panels uh, that you got, where'd you get those from? Um, I bought them off of. They're from Reno G. They're low profile, mm -hmm. um, flexible solar panels. So everything flexible. on this fan, I wanted to. I have no windows, as you Are can see. Are they solar wanted, voltaic? Uh, photovoltaic. Yeah, they're photovoltaic so, solar panels. Um, they're they're flexible and they're mounted really low they're actually very I nice i couldn't even really you can't see you them from the ground really i've so, seen people with a regular silo silica type of uh, solar panel it's because they're the it's on a aluminum frame that's yes. about an inch inch and a half thick like a piece of plexiglass i have a really nice uh, bracket setup i can actually switch the panel off in five minutes it's just undo four bolts on the each corner and then there's a uh, two bolts that allow the bracket to slip up and the whole panel slips out and you can just put another one in if you ever broke one or, so or had a problem i'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be interested in a photovoltaic batteries like uh especially the pricing mm -hmm. what, what is the price the price changed all the time really? um what did you pay for yours? Uh, I think they were about a hundred dollars a panel. That's nothing. That's not much. I mean, that's nothing at all. I had problem also with with the uh, panels at, at uh, after about a year. I noticed that I wasn't getting charged. And, really? And I and I contacted the company and, and they Got said that yeah they sent me brand new ones and they said that they had a manufacturing issue which really? caused the the panels to burn. burn did they request you to send those other ones back? I I did send them back. Okay. That's actually real nice because they're also light, being uh, oh yeah, very light. And you'll see uh, if you get up there, you'll see how how um, they're right on the ribs mm -hmm. of the roof, and they actually have a nice little airflow which goes underneath. Which panels uh, work best when they're cool, mm -hmm. not not when they get hot. You uh, obviously have a fan in your roof. Uh, do you have any AC system in here? Um, I have an AC and it has never worked since I've had the van. So and this I'm is not uh, that worried about it. Your van, the van AC, but if you park, like, uh, do you have? Oh, like I do a, not have an AC system. Okay. Uh, you know, now I guess you, they're getting pretty, pretty uh, efficient. They're efficient now that I've actually met a guy that he runs his off of the batteries. And before you could never do that. You had to There's be plugged into power. There's a 12 volt system, I know, but oh. it's probably expensive. There's a 12, 12 volt yeah. system. I mean, I'd be open to it. Um, and it's a uh, low profile. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'd definitely be open, open to you know this technology is changing all the time. I built this this van about five years ago, so you know since then you a built lot it five of years yeah ago. about five years ago. I've had the van. I put a, a hundred and twenty, a hundred and hundred fifteen thousand miles on the van in in the last four to five years. It is really impressive how nicely you have everything in here. How Thank clean you. of a setup. It's just really amazing. Let's take a look at your um, rear doors and just see what kind of space you okay. have there. Okay, and also here I have a, this is an engine preheater. I just oh. put this in last year, so I'll, I'll oh, remove, this is nice. I'll remove the, pay, the, 
make it official. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, this is actually a diesel preheater. And it, it's a German it, one. Yep, it's the same as the one in the back, except the one in the back uh, heats the air. This one heats coolant in the motor. So, yeah, so it has this a, is a hydro one. It, yep, it's attached to a pump also. So what happens is on a very cold day in Montana or Wyoming, you wake up, uh, you, you hit, hit this twice, and, it, and it'll start circulating uh, coolant through the motor and heating it for about 40 minutes. And then when you start the van up, it's like it never even shut off. And you, so can, actu you can actually turn the key to the on position and you can turn on your vents and start getting. There was a, um, they call it an auxiliary heater. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if in Europe that they put it in there as, as a preheater, but in the United States market, it is set up to not be a preheater for whatever the reason is, it just is set What's up to be for, an auxiliary heater. So after you turn off the van on a cold day, you can continue to heat the cabin for another 30 minutes or something like that. Uh, with a motor running. So there is that? no, there was no pump attached to it to circulate the fluid. So right. this other setup has a pump that's attached to it and it, and it just- Did it come with this uh, switch, the pump, no, no. or this is separate? Um, right now I just turned it on, we'll hear it going in a few minutes, but- Okay, um, good, good, good. Also uh, original setup, you have to turn the middle button. Exactly. On. It's a double press here. Was this not working for you? Um, my air conditioner, I had problems. It it, it it comes on and everything. It just doesn't blow cold. So I, I had some a buddy of mine, we put some there, some. and it worked for a couple of days. But I, I believe the seals are probably out. And I'm up in Maine and Massachusetts, so it's not the But this is the way to turn the heater on this center. Yep. Just, yep. Um, was your button my heater works working? my heater works great it's so just, no 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 not the van heater oh this is to turn the that auxiliary system on. yeah That's the auxiliary system. what was wrong with the auxiliary was the um all the wires were corroded on mine's the uh, are corroded too yeah and you so, fixed that i didn't fix it i took out the whole unit it also looks like it had frozen and expanded and broke but when i i actually took the unit apart and it was really clean inside so i saved it and i'm just going to use it on are another you project it? are you <laughs> using it i have it at, at my home i'm, I'm just going to use it for another project oh, you actually removed that little square box. So yeah, I, re I removed it. I removed it. The um, I, I actually found some instructions online on how to hot wire it and get it running. So I, it's something I want to play with. And I have the pump. I took the pump off and everything too. So that had a pump. Yeah, it has a pump. It has an exhaust. It's pretty much because I've seen the exhaust. You left that. Yeah, I used the same exhaust. I I had to modify the bracket, which was it was really tight in there. So getting in there with a grinder, you got to be real careful that you don't hit any wiring harnesses or have any spray off sparks gonna um, damage any anything. The Bosto sells a similar type of unit. The I actually Bosch? have that the Bosto. Oh yeah. Yeah, same, yeah, yeah. They same, actually, same yep, yep, same thing. I have um, uh, that in one of my vans. I'm actually yep. going to be removing it and installing it in mine. Yeah. So this new system that you got, it came with this display that you mounted in here. Yeah. Right. Some people actually mounted in this uh, this place. Oh yeah. That's, That's the way my, mine is mounted. But I like what you did. Yeah, I just it saves this little I just pocket. Popped out. You know. For the AirPods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I put my AirPods. Um, I want to see this little unit and how you actually install it. Um, see how it works and uh, where it's located. Okay. I actually uh, didn't know you replaced that original unit with this new one. Oh yeah, this it, it actually didn't fit in the same bracket, but because the bracket was there, I was able to, I cut off one side and sure. just modified it around the, the actual and unit. What did, the, what did it cost you for this hydro system? Oh, uh, this thing was quite expensive. Um, About 1600 bucks? No, no, no. Not that's that. what, that's the list price, but you can if you dig around. I think I got it for 700. Okay. Um, so the way mm. that it came, did you do any modifying to this particular system? Um, Except the bracket? No, I just installed it as per, I, as per you know, the instructions. And you could actually use this with the van off uh, for how long? Um, I mean, I usually, you know, if you do 40 minutes, it's fine. It, I've done 80 minutes just so could you Just run your rounds. air um like let's say like this is obviously used in the winter time to pre-warm your engine right yeah so that is the whole idea to circulate the water get the engine yeah, nice but, and, and then warm. it's like i said you can have the key in the on position and you can, and you can turn on your, your air and you run your air and it will become warm before the engine's even started and uh i think uh in your case you have so much batteries in the right way if you i could if, if, if this it dies right, so this this uh, unit actually runs off the um, vehicle battery mm -hmm. but if that if you were worried about it you could just 
hit that yeah. up and then you're gonna have plenty of time you could have because hours and hours your... and maybe days it's because uh, again this is only yeah. um probably 35 watts for the heater and for the little pump is probably only a few more watts it's hardly any power so i think uh, having uh, some auxiliary batteries it's a good idea the best thing with diesel heat is it's dry when you're heating with the diesel it's dry a lot of people use propane heaters you put that in the van and you're gonna wake up your whole window is gonna be dripping I've like it's that. raining inside so, so those both propane heaters is gonna create a lot of a lot condensation of, yeah, a lot of condensation yeah so so it's not coming on? Yeah, it's not coming on. Should come on. We'll see. Let's maybe pop the oh, hood here it is. open. I had to do three. We'll start to here we'll go to the back and, and I'll pop the hood. Okay. And by the time we come back, it will be running. Okay. So we'll just pop this hood open, see where it is, check out the back, let this unit uh, do its job, uh, speed up. Yeah, you could actually see it. So you've placed it. Way, it's very tight. I had to take it is. the front, front headlight and the front bumper to get it in there. Yeah, this is a, a very tight space, but you managed. You really managed. So it's starting you, can up. Hear, you can hear it starting up, but some pretty soon people, it's going to sound like a turbine. Some people, they don't know that the, some of these vans, they came with yeah. this little thing. I, you, you could see, I really can't get my GoPro in there because I have a big setup, but you could see there's a um, little, little exhaust. The smoke. Mm -hmm. You can hear that you can hear the pump kicking on right now yes. to give it deliver fuel. Uh, I guess while this thing is kicking on, uh, this is a 2003 van, so it's going to look a little different. Just a little different idea. Yeah, you could smell it. Oh yeah, you know, the first the first ignition, you'll actually can get a sometimes it'll smoke. You'll give it a little puff of smoke before the actual combustion really starts really? to kick in. There's a little same as the van. There's a little glow plug in there. It actually gets the the uh, burn going. Nice. You have a really clean van for 2003. Oh, thanks. I try to keep it clean. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also looking for another one. If anybody has, I want an 04, 05, or 06 uh, long version, high roof, clean. It needs to be no clean. rust no or rust. minimal rust. This had actually a decent amount of rust what on the. What mileage you looking for? Uh, 150 minus. So, would you consider a van with a million miles uh, that just went over and started counting over this? Yeah, if, if it's actually. clean. <laughs> Most likely. Yeah, you can say, it sounds like a jet engine going when it goes. I like that. Yeah. Sounds special. It's smoking a little bit. Oh, in here. That's just a, there's a little. Normal? Yeah, it just hasn't been started and probably eight months so there's probably wow. a little you know residue right, right, right on the right on the exhaust this is good because you got to every once in a while you got to turn it on or else when it gets cold and you try to turn it on it's not gonna work <laughs> yeah this is uh, that's what I was gonna say like this is good before the winter right. right. you know, I, I actually started my heater up uh, a couple weeks ago and I and it and it didn't want to work for a second but really? we, we got it, it was because the uh, the voltage was it was too low I had I had been it had been cloudy for four or five days and I just turned it on and and it uh it kept shutting off. I looked up the codes and then I was like, oh, it's just a. So I flicked on the switch, connected to my house battery, and started it right up. Things uh, I connected things it to like the to sit. yeah. So let's check out the back. So this is a new window I put in, which allows cross ventilation when the fan is on, blowing out. Uh, I open this up, and it nice. and it and it allows you know it pulls right across the bed, and it makes all the difference in the world. Yes, it does. All the difference in the world. So back here, we have a curtain I can lift up. See my Again, we use magnets for everything, so magnets oh, yeah. hold it on the side over here and everything just to keep everything I really love stationary you, you got to use the magnets um here's our drawer we got full slide oh, nice drawer you have some weather mats in here it looks similar to yeah i just sprayed it with bed, bed liner oh yeah like a cheap bed liner not the real stuff but it's okay. it looks good um did you build this shelf yourself yeah well I, I, really a nice friend of mine donnie wells helped 
put this together with me. It's a cabinetry. It is. He's stuff. a cabinetry guy. But um, we have soft bowls and hinges. We, we have uh, yep, heavy duty. Um, you know, each slide they hold 500 pounds. Every again, this is all removable, even the slides. So I think we have a time lapse where I pop it right out. But this whole drawer just lifts off of a frame, and then. And then on top, you just untoggle, and the whole and the whole frame. Just, so you could just slide it out. Of there. You can have it all out, and it can be completely flat. You know that's a good idea uh, with the toggles um, because everything removes in this van, right? Yep. So if an expediter toggles and wing nuts potentially wanted to do the setup and maybe take some time off, he could easily get back into expediting. Oh yeah, you could expedite. Well, you'll over. see in the in, in the time lapse, the van is completely empty all the way all the way through so i've way. noticed some guys they really pretty much at a pickup they'll just remove the stuff put it towards the front yeah uh, normally you're picking out about one skid anyway so you could okay. pretty much place everything in that area and have room for one skid you would uh, probably need an e-track though oh yeah to t tie everything down yeah um yeah over here this is the air heater it's housed in this box which i also made removable but i've never taken it out um it just uh, there's it just pops off in the front and then this just it, it's it just slips right you know, out you have such nice craftsmanship like this is really really impressive and, yeah this and, the, and you can get access to the heater that you can see the hinges and they just oh there's toggles and this just flips open it's like the attention to detail here is just really really impressive thank you and over here on this side is this is where we plug in to uh, 120 volt and that will automatically charge the house batteries and run everything in the van. Really? Yep. And I so even have a house. Yep. Just uh, wherever you're at. And then right here I have um, 12 volt power and I have a little 12 volt on that side. Yep. Both sides. I'll show you on this other side. But I made little, these are little lights I made. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they also have neodymium magnets on the back and those are square neodymium magnets and they just how many pounds can they hold it's, it's actually quite all of man that thing goes on there like goes on there pretty tight it feels like 25 pounds they just plug it in there and then i have a switch in the front so that nobody can uh steal my power and ground me out mm -hmm. and i just turn that on and we got and look at that and we can aim this or do whatever we got to work on out out in the out in the field well, you could set up a lunch table, have a nice picnic. Yeah. Or like, you know those foldable tables? Yeah, where you could just uh, change your tires. <laughs> uh, you could do probably some uh, uh, tailgating out of here. Yeah, definitely. Pull out your grill, do some grilling. Yeah. Really awesome setup. I could hear this thing is already it's gone. It's working. There's no smoke whatsoever no. anymore. You can feel the heat coming out. You cannot even tell no smoke behind it. And the way I keep a lot of this stuff nice is, is to actually, I paint a little, mo use motor oil on it. You know, to keep it corrosion off. I live in a very uh, corrosive state. <laughs> corrosive area. Corrosive area. They love, they love to spray salt on everything. And uh, some of these uh, cables here, like this is the negative cable, that's a good yeah, idea. That's a grounding. Some, yeah, so it's a good so idea. You can see, this is what's pulling off the alternator. Sure. It's a good idea to put some oil on that because uh, a lot of times people have a pretty bad ground connection over here, causes all kinds of issues. Yeah. And you do have another ground cable towards the bottom here. Yeah. Um, I do want to point out uh, one thing. This might this might maybe help you in the future, maybe not. But to somebody watching, if you haven't started issues like a lot of clicks going on, chances are your ground connection is kind of bad. Mm -hmm. uh, you could actually attach um, like a from an inverter type of a wire like a two gauge wire and just run it from here like the original stuff and oh, you could put it anywhere you could probably put it right here on this yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so cool. just just add extra ground and uh, chances are your van's gonna be uh, good as new again and with the summer coming up summer coming up winter coming <laughs> up um, you if you're not gonna have any hot air blowing inside chances are it's either this unit that went bad or this unit and it's about the same for 2003 uh 2006 for the location except you do have a little bit more access with the 2003 it's just a lot more access to remove yeah. that easy to remove i mean maybe you could just clean the connections and you know whatever because uh, with the with the radiator fluids being in there it, you know clogs things up after what you know and maybe when people use those uh 
radar sealer things, uh, those tablets, uh, they actually mess those things up because they're gonna clog those systems up and they're not gonna be able to open up uh, from letting hot or cold air back in there. So anyways, what else we're gonna do here? I can show you my 12 volt. I don't know if you can get in here, but 12 volt all comes to a, is another magnetic access panel in there. And that's all boat material, fuse block and everything, which is that's where all the fuses are for the in-house um, in power. I really like how you uh, have access to it with neodymium magnets. What is that uh, blue pipe? The blue pipe is to fill the water. I have inside filling. Oh, you, you fill it? I fill from inside. I actually, there's a funnel that uh, goes yeah. right on those really? elephant ears and, and uh, nice. Can, can, I can just take a jug, put it on the top here, just lay it right over and, and hands free it'll just fill. This is a really amazing setup. Uh, Greg, thank you so much for You're sharing. Welcome. Thank you. About uh, this setup you have. I really like how everything's removable. So you got a bike rack over here. Yeah, I have a bike rack also that I built. Um, I put a 200 DR Suzuki motorcycle usually. Right now I just have my bicycle. But the way that this works is I just set this up and it becomes a ramp. And then nice. I can take my bike and bring it up here. And then I just lean it over. Awesome. I take this out. And these off and this just slips in here and this just locks right in there and then I tie the bike to this awesome and it holds it great and then I can also put it right here and I put my kayaks on and I can just tie really straight up there and amazing the kayaks. and that still allows for this load. really amazing well, it's that time already. It's the end of the video. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you like this setup video. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this, or maybe if you have a van setup you want to actually show on my channel, hit me up on my email at zimaletta at gmail.com and possibly we could get together, make a video, and then your van will be shown over here as well. Well, anyways, guys, if you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe to my channel. Please hit a like on this video and consider watching some of my other videos. Take care and I'll see you guys in my next video. My name is Serge Zamaleta. I'm 37 years old. And yes, I experienced success after buying my first home for cash. Back in 2011, I was broke, but I learned to solve problems on my own. Now I'm helping others to solve their problems. I know what pitfalls to avoid to stay profitable in business. Need motivation to be more successful in your life? BF Sprinter expedite their business problems? Then subscribe. Let's find creative solutions to your problems. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my helpful videos.